All right, welcome back to Desktop Inventions, your go-to channel for the latest in 3D printing tech and news. I'm Ashton, and today we're gonna to go into some of the incredible 3D printing news this week, from the whole tariff toboggle to lunar skyscrapers and potentially some innovative shelters. So let's dive right in. Okay, so first news topic here, we have Rapid and TCT 2025 in Detroit last week. That was on April 8th to the 10th. There were some brand new printer releases there and they were quite incredible. So a couple, just to name a few, was the Creality K2, which is basically an economic version based on their previously released K2 Plus. So it's a smaller 250 by 250 build plate um, and has less of the uh, features such as there's no heated chamber. And they haven't released pricing on this yet, probably due to the unknown uh, tariff impacts, but probably going to be in that less than $500, if I were to guess, price range at that economical tier. So they also released the Creality K2 Pro, which I think is supposed to be in between the K2 and the K2 Plus. The K2 Pro will be in that middle area with a 300 by 300 uh, build plate, and it does have a heated chamber and more of the features similar to the K2 Plus, but it's coming in at that mid-tier. Then of course we've got the Bamboo Labs H2D. This printer has been released for a little while now, and it's officially shipping. We've seen it uh, quite a bit online on Reddit and the forums, and quite a few... Uh, bits of uh, customer feedback coming in on that printer. Then we have Flash Forge with their new AD5X printer, which is already completely sold out on their website. Personally, I'm super excited for that printer, probably one of the next ones on my list to try out. Um, that is officially shipping and was shown at the Rapid and TCT fair. And finally, another one that was noteworthy was the Elegoo Centauri Carbon. This is basically a super economic version of the Bamboo X1 Carbon clone for just $300. And there's many more uh, new technology and new 3D printers. So if you want to see more on TCT and Rapid, uh, check out the videos on YouTube for more summaries of the event. Okay, so here we go. Here's a big tariff update. So in recent weeks, the U.S. has significantly increased tariffs on Chinese imports, with some categories facing up to 125 or 145% tariffs. However, this doesn't mean that 3D printer prices will increase or double overnight. So let's dive into that a little more. So the current tariff structure for 3D printers, we have a base duty based on the HDS code, which is 3.1%. Then we have additional tariffs up to 25% based on the section 301 for Chinese imports. And then beyond that, we have a possible up to 125% additional tariffs based on the retaliatory tariffs policy. So with that, we're looking at total effective tariff rate of up to 153%, so that's pretty huge. But one of the biggest factors here is probably the de minimis exemption. So currently, shipments under $800 are exempt from duties and tariffs. However, this exemption for Chinese imports will be eliminated on May 2nd, 2025, meaning all shipments from China after May 2nd will be uh, subject to all of these additional tariffs on 3D printers and other objects as well. So all that being said, what are we seeing so far? Let's take Bamboo Labs, for example. So on the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon Combo, the 3D printer that I have over here, the price increase on their website from $1,349 to $1,399. This small increase may be because Bamboo Labs decided to take a hit in their profits in order to maintain and grow their market share. Remember, we have the Elegoo Centauri Carbon coming out at just $300 to give them a lot of competition. It could also be because they have a large amount of inventory that is already shipped out of China prior to these tariffs and already being stored in warehouses in the US. And if it's the latter of those two, there's a big possibility that the X1 carbon price will be increasing quite a bit in coming months. It's hard to say right now. Let's take a look at the Bamboo Labs H2D on the other hand. This has already increased from $21.99 to $26.99 potentially based on the opposite reasons. Number one, they probably don't have an existing inventory in the US since this printer just came out and they probably don't have large uh, stock built up in the US. The other reason might be because this is a brand new printer design and they likely face less competitions from clones trying to undercut this printer with similar features but lower cost. At least for now, I think those clones are going to come. So what are my recommendations? So number one, I guess I would say, if you really need a 3D printer, buy now, buy sooner than later. If you're buying a 3D printer, especially if it's under that $800 price tag, get it ordered before May 2nd and you'll save 
a potential boatload of tariffs and duties um, due to that de minimis exemption. However, before you buy, make sure the printer that you buy, especially if it's over $800, is shipped from a U.S. warehouse, which means the seller has already covered the import and tariff duties. However, if you order a printer and it ships from China to you, you may be stuck with a surprise custom clearance bill to pay for all those tariffs. You don't want to end up with that. So another option if you're not urgent to buy a printer is to wait and see. I think these high tariff levels at 125-145% tariffs probably can't last forever. If you're willing to wait 6, 9, 12 months, there'll probably be something different, hopefully lower in that time period. So the third option is to consider non-Chinese brands. So something like Fusion 3, which is manufactured and based in the US, they'll have no tariffs on their product. But I think a lot of their components are coming from China, so they'll probably get hit with tariffs sooner or later to increase their prices. You could also look at buying Prusa printers, which are made in the Czech Republic. However, note they still will have a 10 to 20% uh, import duty on those. And eventually most of their components also probably are coming from China. So they'll get hit with some uh, tariff increases later down the road as well. So it's going to be a bumpy, bumpy road ahead with uh, prices of 3D printers increasing. Not to mention that, but if you buy 3D printed filament from China, that's going to be increasing quite a bit too, especially after that May 2nd date when it doesn't come in that under that $800 minimum uh, exemption rule. So that's my big update on tariffs for now. Let me know if this was helpful and if you want me to dive into this deeper in future videos as I'm sure these rates are going to change. And also let me know if you want more recommendations of materials and printers you can buy that are maybe outside of the China supply chain. If you want that, I can help dig into that as well. Okay, enough of the tariff talk. Next up is a 3D printed skyscraper on the moon. That's right, the Sun reports that British firm Foster & Partners has designed a 50 meter tall solar-powered tower to be built using lunar regolith. Partnering with NASA and Branch Technology, this project aims to provide sustainable energy for lunar colonies and even to support future missions to Mars and other places. So when you think about it, this really makes sense that you'd want to use the material on the moon to build structures on the moon. Every kilogram of material that you have to put on a rocket and send into space costs a lot of money. So if you can find a way to take the lunar regolith and break it down and then use a 3D printer to print that into structures, um, you're gonna be money ahead and you're gonna be able to just keep building and building structures with the material that's available on the moon. So it does make sense for the moon and Mars in the future as well. However, it's really cool that 3D printing is already in space and in the future it's going to be on the moon and other planets. I hope somebody builds a giant benchy made of lunar regolith in the future. That would be pretty awesome. Okay, next on the list, Japan is upgrading its rural train stations with 3D printed shelters. According to the Times, this initiative focuses on sustainability, using 3D printed to create durable, stylish shelters that spruce up these areas. It's a very smart way to blend tech with public infrastructure and perfect for these rural commuters. So, it's not that big of a train station, it's about 100 square feet, so 10 foot by 10 foot. It's not that big, but the really cool part is, they got this thing built and installed in less than six hours. So after the last train of the night, they started construction on this and they went overnight installing this and they were done with it before the first morning train the next day. So how they did this was most of the structure, the 3D printed structure, was prefabbed in factories before it was shipped um, on trucks to site. So what do you think? Is this a good application of 3D printing? Have you seen any 3D printed uh, buildings or structures in your area? If you have, leave a comment down in the comment section down below. I'm really interested to see if you've seen these in the wild yet. All right, so finally, let's talk about Icon. This is a super large format 3D printing company that I stumbled upon that is focused on 3D printing houses and other large structures. So on the website, the Icon Codex website highlights some of their very cool, custom, unique house designs. And they have a really well laid out library that shows all sorts of 3D printed house designs, uh, personally, I spent over an hour just browsing through some of these house designs, taking the roof off, looking at the floor layout plan, and one of my favorite designs in there was the Bend, which is a unique horseshoe shaped house with a big open living room and kitchen in the middle. Although I don't know what I would do with those gigantic tall sloped ceilings. 
So I can see the good and the bad on these. Some of these designs are very unique and artistic looking, but however, what would you do with a sloped wall? I mean, you can't um, hang picture frames on it. You might hit your head on it. And it is cool to see some of the different design concepts such as this porch or patio area with uh, you know, these 3D printed columns that are definitely in a different shape than you would see normally. What's also cool about this website is you can scroll down and you can see the price of these houses and the square footage, etc. And it gives you a real uh, good concept of what this might cost in your area. So personally, I'm not ready to live in a 3D printed house yet, but I think it was really fun to browse the website and kind of open my mind to some of the possibilities of what could be done with 3D printed construction. So if you're bored, go ahead and browse that website for a while. I'm sure you'll be entertained and see some really cool concepts you wouldn't have thought about before. All right, so with the news topics covered, let's jump over to the Printables and Thingiverse Prints of the Week. All right, for the Thingiverse Print of the Week, we have these standard plier handles from Olier. So these are printed to go onto the standard pliers that would come with the uh, uh, Creality Ender 3 style printers. I think uh, these are very famous in 3D printing world. A lot of people have these at home. The problem with these is they have these nice soft gripper handles, but over the course of a couple of years, these tend to uh, disintegrate and fall off. So then you're left with uh, just the bare metal plier handles here, which are very uncomfortable and not fun to use. For a while there, I had this wrapped in electrical tape to make it a little softer. But then I ran across these uh, replacement handles that you can just 3D print off. So they 3D print vertically on the bed like this, and then they just uh, slip onto here like so. And then for the other side, you have the, uh, the spring clip here. So you want to put that spring in here, and this is also compatible with that spring clip. And what that spring clip is for is when you squeeze the wires, pliers together, they re automatically reopen. So that is very useful. So yeah, these are super awesome and are now putting life back into these pliers that I otherwise was not using very much. The only thing I would recommend to change in the future, it has these nice grooves here to fit your fingers into. They're not the most comfortable thing to have in the palm of your hand, so it would be nice in the future to have uh, one side with the grips and one side with a more smooth surface that would make it a little more comfortable to use. But overall, super, super happy. Um, highly recommend printing these if you have some bare metal pliers at home that are not uh, comfortable. Okay, for the printables print of the week here, we have this rubber band plane which is a really simple print that will normally print out flat on the printing bed. And then I used a lighter to heat up and warm this to bend these uh, propellers to 45 degrees. And then also use the uh, lighter to bend, heat up and bend these tail fins up 45 degrees. Uh, one important thing to note on this, with this print, we've got this rib on the front of the wing here on one side and the other side is smooth. We don't have the rib. So it's very important to put this rib on the top of your plane when you're trying to fly it. The reason for this is when the air moves across this surface with the rib, it'll move a little bit slower or take longer to get over it. And on the bottom side, the air will move faster and it'll go quicker across the bottom. Long story short, that creates lift. So that will cause this plane to lift up in the air a little bit. If you try and fly it the other way, it's gonna go straight into the ground. So that being said, let's try some, uh, some test flights of this guy. There we go, got the rubber band assembled and depending on which way you bent the wingtips, you'll want to wind this up accordingly to make it uh, give forward force or momentum there. Just put it on the table and slide it to the edge and once it goes over the edge, let go. So this is a really fun design to tinker and play with. This was designed by Brawley Banana 327. Uh, it's, some of the parts I really like about this is the way it's designed and printed out. There's not really any weak points in the layer lines, like maybe these couple fins here, but other than that, it's a really durable print. Um, I've flown this at least 20 or 30 times and just pick it up, keep winding again and go again. It is very durable, it doesn't break. The other fun thing about it is if you just add a little bit of heat, you can adjust all these different aero surfaces, these rear flaps, you can adjust these side flaps, a lot of just uh, tinkering that you can do with this simple little toy. 
And if it's uh, not balanced the way that you want it, you can always take your hot glue gun, add a little bit of glue to the back or other areas to weigh it down and experiment in those ways. So this is really fun to tinker with and this is a great printables print of the week. So that's it for the 3D printing news topics this week. If you love this video, hit the like and subscribe icon down below. What was your favorite story from today? Um, what 3D printing topics do you think I should cover next? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you there in the comments and I'll see you next time on Desktop Inventions. Okay, that's fine. You can sit there, girl. Just don't lick your butt on camera, please. No butt licking, okay?